Wow, 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 wow. Thank you, Apray Club. That was an awesome way to start the event. But before we officially kick off, I want to see in the chat, what is the kill with the most support in the chat right now? I want to feel it. I want to see it right now. I'm reading in the chat. I'm reading Chimera. Chimera with the Aphia, Quexus, Gargantua. Let's go. Let's go, the club. Let's go, Final Frontier. Chat is going crazy. I love this. I love this. Awesome. We have all the guilds here today. And now I think it's time to officially welcome everyone to 4 to 6 Live. My name is Santi, and I adopted the form of a Fotoli today for this event. And of course, we are super, super excited to have you here. And I am incredibly happy and grateful to be able to host one of this great historic event again. But before we get, uh, we get fully started, uh, what is 4 to 6? You may be wondering if you're new here. So I want to start with a little bit uh, of context here. As you know, Stratless continues to pave the way for mass adoption of Web3 gaming. It delivers the technology of the future to here and now for users and developers alike. As a blockchain pioneer, Stratless is ushering a decentralized and self-sovereign way of life into the mainstream. After over 18 months of largely stealth mode development, the summer of 2022 has seen the release of a series of highly anticipated products and features. These products are being released of, in waves of four to six live keynote events with multiple product on bills. And this is what we are doing now. So now with this being said, uh, I want to emphasize here that the job is not finished. This event is just a milestone, a step closer to making this dream a reality. This is four to six live. Now, I would love to introduce you to my awesome and absolute rock star co-host. I call her the Metaverse Queen, Ash. Welcome, Ash. How are you today? Hey, Santi. I am I'm good. I am so freaking excited right now for today's event. Um, I feel like this is something that we've been waiting for for a while here in Star Atlas and the Star Atlas ecosystem. And I can't believe it's finally here. I'm so stoked. So with that, I want to go ahead and say hello, everyone, and officially welcome to another epic 4 to 6 live event. Today, we will be unveiling some products that I know you all have been patiently waiting for. <laughs> we have a jam-packed day, so I think we should go ahead and dive right in. But before we do, I would like to add that at the conclusion of today's 4 to 6, be sure to head on over to the Star Atlas Discord for a very special edition of the Atlas Brew with Santi, Dom, and Jose. If you're a member of the press, you should have received a Zoom link that will take you to the press room for a live Q&A with CEO and co-founder Michael Wagner. But first, Santi, I got to know, how are you feeling about today's event? Ash, I'm, I'm feeling great, Ash. I mean, the, the moment is finally here. We have been waiting for this for a long time, but I'm ready. I'm super ready. I am ready too. And, you know, I want to know, how is everyone in the audience feeling today? Are you guys pumped? Are you guys excited for what is happening today? I need to feel some excitement. Santi, do you need to feel it? Yeah, Ash, yeah, Ash. I need to know. What are you, tell us in the chat, what are you most excited about for today? I want to see that chat flying right now. Let's go. I love it. Let's I love go. it. I want to see it flying. Keep it rolling. I love seeing all the excitement going through that chat right now. Keep showing us how amped you are for today's event and for our very first speaker of the day. You know him, you love him. His words have a way of invoking our imaginations and transporting us to far off futuristic lands and always leaving the audience at the very edge of their seat. Please welcome our fearless leader of the Stratless Metaverse, CEO and co-founder, Michael Wagner, with a look at all of the products dropping today and a few exciting sneak peeks. Michael. All right, Ash. Well, thank you for that warm introduction. As always, I'd like to wish a very warm welcome to everyone out in the audience. Thank you for joining us for this second edition of 426 Live. This is the moment you've all been waiting for. I am incredibly excited. What we have lined up for you today is nothing short of extraordinary. It is the culmination of many months of work, 
although I know it probably feels like a lifetime for everyone out there waiting in anticipation. But the reality is what this team has been able to accomplish working with disruptive, leading edge technology in such a short period of time is genuinely unprecedented. I wanted to take a moment to send a special thank you to every single person on the Automata team working tirelessly to bring this vision to life. Before I take us through the lineup for today, I want to, in this moment, take us back to the age of rebirth, which as many of you will remember, was an event we launched a little over a year ago. It was a time that in many ways represents the genesis of Star Atlas. And it was your first step through the doorway of this mystical world, starting with the discovery of Iris. While the entire collection with its beautiful art and immersive AR and captivating soundscapes drew our minds and more importantly, our hearts into the potential of this digital world. One poster in particular really captivates me and specifically a Silva voiceover that was produced for poster number four, a short story of the lost astronaut. It's a great piece where he talks about the evolution of technology and the potential of the metaverse. But I'm just going to paraphrase a few of my favorite lines. In it, he says, the metaverse is going to change the world. The metaverse will be a sort of speciation and an incarnation of what John Smart calls the transcension hypothesis. He goes on to say, there has been this simultaneous expansion that characterizes human history, expanding outwards, conquering new land and new territory, exploring the moon, then into space. But there has been this other expansion, this inner expansion that has been going straight into digital universes through ones and zeros through denser and denser computational substrates, moving into a scale where metaverses can be moved into, where we can download or upload our minds into the machine. He postures that Star Atlas frees our minds beyond this pale blue dot, in the words of Carl Sagan, and that this is how we get off this rock, that Star Atlas enables us to explore space through digital means. He closes with a quote by D.H. Lawrence, and I love this, that says, may we free the brave, reckless gods within us all. It's really a powerful monologue. It strikes me every time I listen to it. And while Rebirth was certainly a genesis, today is very much a coming of age story. As we mature as a company, as a team, as a project, and as a community. In Lore, the introduction to Rebirth was a piece of wisdom from the Ooster Army Elder stating, the first to arrive at the universe's next frontier is the first to knock on the gates of prosperity. Today, we get to take the next bold step in innovation, and we invite you to immerse yourself in the cinematic beauty of Star Atlas and take a peek through those cosmic gates as this digital world materializes around us and we unveil what the future has in store for us all. As I said, we have an action-packed agenda today, consisting of a total of six presentations from teams across Automata with an associated product launch for each. We're going to kick off with a presentation by Dan Park, in-house general counsel, discussing sustainable governance. In this piece, we share our thoughts on the path to full decentralization, which is our North Star. 
This is accompanied by the release of an official sustainable governance white paper. Then you'll be hearing from me again, discussing the next feature addition to the DAO platform. Atlas Locking and the associated seller marketplace fee program with a emphasis on the economic architecture that this new feature unlocks. One quick footnote here. Some of you have already noticed that we quietly rolled out a number of improvements to the DAO platform this week, including the ability to lock additional polis without extending your lock duration, which was a frequently requested feature. So make sure you check that out after the event. From there, Tim McBurney outlines the future for Star Atlas Core. This is the upcoming graphic novel and epic tale of early adventurers unlocking the mysteries of what will become the Star Atlas. Starting today, you'll also be able to read through chapter zero, a short teaser of what's to come in this saga. After that, Mo Yazdani, product manager on Scream, describes a very special surprise release for the web client that we have prepared for you. In our fifth presentation, Jim Carter will cover our first open source repository, the Foundation Kit, which integrates the Solana blockchain natively into Unreal Engine. This is a first of its kind. And this one has massive implications for creator-based worlds as extensions to the Star Atlas universe. And finally, Danny personally takes us through a guided tour of the showroom, our first Unreal Engine game client and the first time you get to interact with your ships in engine. And don't worry, you'll be able to start playing this yourself today, but you do have to stick around until the end of the event to find out how. I'm also thrilled to announce that all of these new features can be explored through a beautiful new menu system on play.staratlas.com. But again, don't go there yet because we are just getting started. And I just want to take one moment to mention that we are also releasing the quarterly state of the economy report tomorrow, in which we are literally defining what it means to be a digital citizen and exploring the past three months of this blossoming economy. Now, we've been working a lot, but we have also seen a proliferation of development across the community. It has been absolutely incredible watching this ecosystem flourish, especially knowing we're just at the beginning of what we will become. There have been some amazing developments from Coexist and Chimera, the Club, the Hologram News Network, StarTech, the Galactic Dash, the Star Atlas Guild's website, alongside a constant stream of content from AFIA and Final Frontier and Rome and so many more. This is the power of the metaverse. This is the power of decentralization. And this, this is power to the people. So everyone sit back and prepare yourself for an amazing show because we have just entered the next era of Star Atlas. That really was incredible. Thank you so much, Michael. You know, honestly, I love that you referenced the Rebirth posters with Jason Silva because that piece right there for me was one of the first things that I stumbled upon in my journey to Star Atlas. And to be honest, it still gives me chills every time I hear that. So thank you for that. Yeah, Ash, I think that was awesome. And, and this event is really going to be a game changer. I'm honestly super ready to go. Let's rock. All right, all right. Well, let's go, Santi. It is time. Let's dive right in. Our first release is actually two separate updates related to the Star Atlas DAO, both of them critical to our ecosystem. The first is the release of a sustainable governance document with our chief counsel, Dan Park, will present. And after that, Michael will be back to talk about Atlas Locking. But first, here's Dan. If you're a fan of political strategy, this is going to be the most exciting part of today's events. I'm a little biased, of course, but I'm going to share some details about core governance structures that will determine how Star Atlas moves forward. 
It does not get cooler than that. I love thinking about what is possible if we succeed in building a community and gamer-driven metaverse society. It is something that could endure for generations. Web3 and decentralization enable true digital property ownership, break down access barriers, remove intermediaries, and align the incentives of everyone who participates from gamers to creators. We have spent a ton of time thinking about DAOs. DAOs are the next step in human governance and coordination. The DAO space, however, is messy to say the least, and there are a lot of lessons we can draw from what we see out there. We have written a new paper laying out our thoughts for a framework for sustainable governance in Star Atlas. There are two overarching drivers behind the framework, sustainability and fun. Sustainability requires us to focus on what's immutable, permanent ownership of game assets confirmed by NFTs, and permanent game logic deployed to the blockchain. We also must focus on the adaptable by creating off-chain systems that are flexible but subservient to on-chain governance. By balancing the immutable and the adaptable, the Star Atlas DAO could last effectively forever. The second driver is fun because we're gamers and gamers know that people will devote endless hours to building a community if, at its core, the entire experience is fun. And that's critical because the DAO is the battlefield for political gameplay in Star Atlas. Star Atlas has countless layers of economic complexity and gameplay. There's resource mining and engineering, science and exploration, combat and racing. And then there is the game of thrones, political maneuvering, building and breaking alliances and making decisions that shape Star Atlas as a whole. And that's played out at the DAO. These are the essential elements of the DAO. They provide for both on-chain and off-chain functionality, and together they give the DAO the tools necessary to sustain itself over the long term. The DAO represents the interests of the full community. Everyone from gamers to builders to observers has a voice in this community. You need polis voting power, or PVP, to vote on and exercise control over the DAO's major functions. And the treasury sits right at the center. There is over 250 million Atlas in there today from the DAO's sale of resources in SCORE, and the DAO can use it for just about anything. Okay, not exactly anything. It does have to be for a legal purpose. No sending Atlas to North Korea. But ecosystem development is fair game. The DAO's other key functions include monetary policy, such as in-game taxation, and other broad decisions about who gets to develop Star Atlas and who gets to use the Star Atlas brand. The constitution is the next element, because very few DAOs in the Web3 space are built to last. They often lack a unifying vision and probably will lose focus or momentum. We think it's necessary to enshrine the community's core principles in a constitutional document so that the DAO can make consistent decisions well into the future. These are some of the core principles that we envision for the DAO, but please do give us your feedback because we cannot wait to work with you as we draft the Constitution together. Next, there is going to be a council of elected representatives from the community. This will be a vocal, visible, and essential part of the DAO. The council will guide the proposals process and ensure that they are actionable and consistent with the Constitution. If you are active in the community, it may be time to start thinking of a campaign slogan. More info about the first ever council election is coming soon. The foundation is the legal arm of the DAO. It carries out the DAO's off-chain instructions. For example, if the DAO wanted to enter into a contract, it would need a legal entity to actually sign the dotted line, and that's where the foundation steps in. It is obligated to serve the will of the DAO and cannot bypass the voting process. Polis Improvement Proposals, or PIPs, are the DAO's legislative process. Authors can draft pips that contain on-chain or off-chain instructions that can change any aspect of Star Atlas. Anyone can write a pip, but you do need PVP to cast a vote. The final element is the developer community because decentralized and community-driven development is one of Star Atlas's key pillars. Automata is the initial contributor to Star Atlas. Automata set the stage, but today it is just one of many active developers in the ecosystem. There are guilds and builders creating countless tools, 
resources, games, and media. And that all makes Star Atlas so strong and unique. Perhaps some of the most exciting picks that we get to discuss and vote on will deal with how the DAO uses its treasury and branding power to accelerate decentralized development. So head over to govern.staratlas.com, read our new paper on sustainable governance, and then go to Discord because we are opening a new governance channel where we can talk about all things DAO. You will certainly found, find me there day and night. We are all Star Atlas citizens and we get to build our galactic self-government together. All right, well, thanks very much, Dan, and hello again, everyone. You know, major kudos to Dan for his work on structuring this sustainable path to decentralization. This idea of a globally distributed digital government is completely radical. It's untested and it's unproven and it's sure to be full of challenges, but I believe it to be one of the core features empowering each and every one of you going into the future. It's going to take time and ingenuity and a tolerance for iteration, but getting this right can be empowering and transformative for millions or potentially billions of people all over the world. As a continuation of the governance discussion, I'm going to outline the Atlas Locker, the next feature addition to the DAO platform, as well as the associated seller market fee structure being added to the marketplace. Now, I know no one likes paying fees, but I think you'll find that the Atlas Locker goes a long way in creating ecosystem benefit commensurate with these new costs. Before I get into the specific functionality of the new locker, I wanted to provide a high level overview of the updated economic architecture that this feature unlocks. The infographic that we're looking at outlines the bi-directional connection points between three core pillars of the Star Atlas ecosystem, gaming products, the marketplace, and the DAO. This twin loop allows for the free flow of users in both directions. And with the introduction of the Atlas Locker, we bring all three of these core pillars together into a cohesive loop, a virtuous feedback cycle. So let me start at the top with gaming, um, as gaming is really the centerpiece of our metaversal experience, and specifically the connection between gaming and the marketplace. The marketplace is really the entry point and exit point for the player experience. You buy ships and assets to get into the game and use that same facility to sell anything that you hold or have collected or crafted along the way. But beyond that, it is the engine room for the entire economy. It is what facilitates commerce between players and as we'll find, will be critical in the crafting and manufacturing supply chain loops that are to come in the future. Moving over to gaming in the DAO, well, as Dan just outlined, the universal DAO drives the future of game development and puts polis stakeholders firmly at the wheel of development decision-making. Within the game, sub-DAOs at the faction and regional level enable, enable in-game political strategy, one of the core pillars of Star Atlas. We're moving in the other direction, well, the game is the primary driver of revenue to the DAO. And this is accomplished through the recapture of a variety of operating expenses, which are incurred during gameplay. Purchasing R4 to participate in Faction Fleet, for example. By extension of this, it funds the DAO treasury, which can then be utilized for ecosystem growth and development. A bigger and better and more robust game environment. Now, there is one major update here with the addition of the Atlas Locker. By setting Polis as the reward mechanism to Atlas locking, we enable players to utilize Atlas to gain access to governance and political strategy, and we further embed every gamer into the ecosystem. What I wanted to highlight today, however, was the new connection, the connection between the marketplace and the DAO. With the addition of fees, the marketplace becomes yet another driver of revenue into the DAO. And this is really important as we start to rebalance certain economic drivers between players 
and polis stakeholders. R4 crafting, for example, moving over to the crafting economy. So once again, moving back in the other direction with the Atlas locker providing discounts to fees on the marketplace. You've often heard me speak of creating a circular and functional and sustainable economy within Star Atlas. With this latest feature addition, we've now completed one of those core architectural loops. This is really a huge win for all of us. So let's talk a little bit about those fees. Fees start at 6% for everyone. However, fees are only paid by the seller or the producer of assets. Now, we estimate the majority of the economy in the future will consist of assets earned through gameplay, which otherwise have what we call low marginal cost to produce. You're essentially spending time in game to earn more loot. The DAO will collect 33% of the fee revenue across the platform with Automata taking the remaining 67%. And this new revenue stream for Automata helps ensure the vision of Star Atlas materializes. Additionally, everyone has the ability to reduce fees by participating in the Atlas Locker. Now, there are five tiers of participation available, ranging from 10,000 all the way up to 72.8 million Atlas Locked. To the column of the right of the locked amount minimum, you see the fee reduction, which is applied to the gross 6% fee amount, as well as the share of the remaining fee that goes directly to the DAO. Today, I also want to address any questions about how we arrived at these numbers and whether or not this system is fair. We conducted extensive market research on both NFT and exchange marketplace fees prior to arriving at these numbers. And I can assure you, these are consistent with competitive market rates across the NFT landscape. And yes, it is possible to receive a sizable discount to these fees with enough Atlas locked, all the way up to 85%. However, we specifically designed this system with greater marginal benefit to the lower tiers. Let me explain that. A tier one user will lock 1,000 Atlas per one percentage point discount on average. At tier three, that goes up to 22,400 Atlas. And at tier five, that goes up to 856,000 Atlas per one percentage point discount on average. I want to give everyone a moment for that to sink in. A tier five user is locking 856 times the amount of, of a tier one user for every single percentage point up to that 85%. These larger discounts require a considerable commitment to the DAO. And these large locked amounts benefit every Atlas earner with the e within the ecosystem. So every Star Atlas gamer. And finally, I do believe larger discount structures will become available to more members of the community, whether that's through DAX using multi-sig wallets or other decentralized modals of participating in the marketplace. In many ways, this fee structure encourages more decentralized development around Star Atlas. And after all, this is really the future that we are building. If we move over to the Polis Rewards, well, this next chart probably looks familiar. This is the Polis Rewards Emission Curve for the Atlas Locker. Now, it follows the exact same emission curve as the Polis Locker, except there are 10.8 million Polis set in reserve be distributed over the next eight years versus 127.8 million in the Polis Locker. The Locker will take a checkpoint snapshot at midnight UTC every single day, and your portion of rewards will be based on your total share of Atlas Locked multiplied by that daily reward. These rewards can be collected throughout the day as opposed to all at once, which is the case in the Polis Locker. And the total reward for that day will be cumulative and fully claimable by midnight UTC in the day following the snapshot. And finally, the Atlas Locker introduces a new mechanic for token withdrawal, a withdrawal cooldown window. 
Once a withdrawal is requested, a user must wait 21 days to recover their tokens. We've outlined all of the steps in this process here on this slide. You go to the Locker Detail page and you initiate a withdrawal on the bottom right. Uh, this will require a signature with your associated wallet where your Atlas is locked. I do want to point out here that all marketplace discounts and Polis rewards cease immediately when requesting withdrawal. Although a user can cancel this process at any time uh, during the withdrawal window and reactivate all of their benefits. Otherwise, you wait 21 days, you return to the locker detail page, and you reclaim your Atlas. It's all very simple. And finally, to close out this segment, to make sure it's perfectly clear, we're going to be sharing a video demonstration of the entire locking process. So thanks very much for listening in everyone. And I really hope you enjoy the rest of the event. Thank you so much for that, Dan and Michael. I know that both of these releases are incredibly important to building the pathway to complete and sustainable decentralization for our community and also to furthering the entire Star Atlas ecosystem. Yeah, exactly. But did I hear it right? Did Dan say that he is uh, one of the highest ranked arena players in World of Warcraft? I mean, I don't know, but I didn't realize lawyers could be so cool. That's a pretty awesome fun fact right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. But on a more serious note, I love. Uh, I want to highlight some things that Dan mentioned. Here we have an unprecedented opportunity to build a digital self-government from the ground up, and a metaverse society that could endure for generations, with a real possibility to last forever. Also, regarding the DAO, I think it's important to mention again that the DAO represents the entire community, no matter what you do you actually will only need some police voting power. Yeah, no, it's true. And you know, it's really awesome to be here on the forefront of such a great, you know, opportunity and just really a great time to be here this early in the Star Atlas ecosystem. So for more information on the sustainable governance framework, please refer to the governance framework white paper that will be dropped in the chat for you now. And with all of that Atlas that has been piling up for you in the score, Lock it now on the DAO page. The link to do so will be dropped in the chat now. <laughs> but before we hop into our next product drop, how do you all feel about some exclusive sneak peeks? I mean, Santi, I don't know about you, but I feel that any Star Atlas event would not be complete without some exclusive sneak peeks. What do you say? Ash, you know me. You know me. Sneak peeks? I mean, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's go. All right. So the lore being built around Star Atlas is incredibly important. It not only adds depth and richness to the Star Atlas ecosystem, but it has a way of bringing the community together and really igniting the passions from within. Let's take a look at the upcoming Star Atlas graphic novel core with Tim McBurney. All right. Thanks, Ash. Hey, everyone. My name's Tim McBurney. I'm an author an illustrator and lead artist at Automata. And my team has a special, unique focus. Our goal is to explore our known universe. Today, I'd like to introduce to you Core, a story set before 
the Convergence War where we follow our hero Jian as he traverses the Star Atlas universe. His world is changed forever as a visit to a planet in the high risk zone causes catastrophic damage to his team and his ship. It's a tale of heroism, heartbreak and epic adventure and it's going to be out later this year. We aim to build on what continues to make Star Atlas successful, a rich and complex world deeply intertwined with new technologies that continue to push the boundaries for immersive storytelling. Now, Core is going to be an engaging and amazing graphic novel if I have anything to do with it. But for the Star Atlas community, it's even more. This is going to be the first time that you're going to get a chance to go deeper into the lore and discover the story that was mapped out in the original Rebirth posters. Lore is the fabric that stitches together a great universe. It's a record and a history of what is happening and what has happened. And it's this understanding of that history that allows us to better understand and appreciate the characters that inhabit and share this world with us. But it also allows us some extra insight into how we might shape the future as players and participants in the metaverse. It's what allows us to hopefully change the law in the future. For Star Atlas, it's the foundation upon which our universe is built. It's how we understand the deep, complex, factional rivalries that exist within the game and within the world. It's how we understand what it's going to be like to live and exist in a deeply interconnected, complex science fiction universe. And for the graphic novel, it's where we'll learn what's worth fighting for and why we have to go through the Convergence War to get to the other side, to get to a paradise of space proliferation. So who's creating this graphic novel and prequel? Well, I've been a science fiction and fantasy fan basically since before I can remember. It's why I learned to read so I could read and enjoy all of the great science fiction and fantasy books that I had access to. And as I developed throughout my career, I've worked in video games as well as comics. I spent a long part of my career writing and drawing comics, mostly within the French comic book industry. And I've also spent a lot of time as a concept and story artist in the video game and animation and film industries. I've worked for clients such as Blizzard Entertainment, Bungie, and Wizards of the Coast. And now I am firmly enmeshed within the Star Atlas family and universe. Helping me out along with the Star Atlas writing team is the talented Matt Medney head writer at Star Atlas and CEO of Heavy Metal, an incredibly iconic comic book brand that he's recently brought back to life and popularity. So where can you get this? Well, you'll be able to get this monthly series on the Galactic Marketplace and Magic Eden as limited run NFT collectibles with exclusive covers, as well as some extra special surprises should you be clever enough to piece them together. We'll have a new section on our website where you can stay up to date on the latest episodes and extra lore as well as exciting developments that are yet to be released. And for those not familiar with Web3 or perhaps not quite ready to take the plunge into wallets and NFTs, Core will be free to read on all of your favorite comic book apps such as Webtoons, Kindle and more. So be sure to share those with your friends when the first chapters drop this fall and sign up for the newsletter so you don't miss out. Happy hunting and good luck. Thanks, Tim. That graphic novel looks incredible. Now, you know, I too am a huge sci-fi fan, as are so many of our Star Atlas community members. So I think I speak for all of us when I say that we cannot wait to dive on into that and soak up all of that Star Atlas lore. Yeah, exactly. Yes, I love, I love 
that we will be diving deeper into the posters and learning the story before the convergence war. We will also be learning what is worth fighting for. I love that. I love it too. And you know, I really love the quote where he uses lore is the fabric that stitches together a great universe. That's really a powerful statement right there. And I think that it's something that speaks so true for our Star Atlas community. And I just can't wait to see, you know, even more and really learn more about where it is that Star Atlas came from. So this is going to be awesome. Yeah, let's go. Want to stay up to date through all the updates that have to do with the graphic novel? Well, follow the link dropped in the chat now and be sure to sign up for the core newsletter. And of course, because one sneak peek is never enough around here, this next one makes me want to scream from the top of my lungs. Is there a scream emote? I don't know. Is there a scream emote on Twitch? Because if there is, I want to see it rolling through that chat right now as we welcome Mo Yazdani with a little sneak peek and an incredibly exciting update to scream. Everyone, I'm Mo Yazdani, and I'm genuinely stoked to present a new surprise feature, which is our WebGL-based Fleet Viewer. But before I do, I want to shed some light and give some background. Star Atlas is like many windows that open into the same universe. These windows are our gaming modules that we're developing, and one of them is our web browser-based group strategy minigame, currently codenamed Project Scream. One of the key decisions we made earlier this year on the project was to develop the game using a 3D web game engine, as opposed to building the game with a text-based 2D UI. Ultimately, we did this so we can build a much more fun and immersive experience for our players than in school. After extensive R&D and testing of various WebGL engines, we landed on Play Canvas to power the experience, and we currently believe that it's the best choice for an in-browse window into Star Atlas. This Fleet Viewer module enables you to see your ships at an incredible level of fidelity in a standalone module. To access this feature, simply head to the Fleet Viewer and select the ship you want to view using the drop-down menu. That's it. Then you're free to use the camera controls to zoom in, zoom out, and pan around your ships. One thing I will say though, is not all of the ships have been completed, so some of them will be grayed out until they're carried over into Play Canvas. I hope you enjoy this new window into Star Atlas and your first opportunity to see your ships come to life in a web browser. It's just a little taste of what Project Screen will bring, which by the way, we're full steam ahead on on the production side and is tracking very well. Last, but certainly not least, I want to give a huge kudos to everybody who is involved with the design and production of these assets. Thanks, everyone. Happy viewing, and Ash, over to you. You know, that is so exciting. And I got to be honest, Santi, like when I first saw that, I was surprised about, you know, these new updates to Scream. Like, I, I don't know. What are you thinking about this? I think that that is absolutely incredible. The ships look amazing. I can't yeah. wait to yeah, no, that, that's what I call a surprise, you know, everybody was looking for something about Scream, and now you're able to see your ships in Scream already. I love that. I love it. I love it, too. So as we said, this will be live after today's event. So if you're ready for a small taste of what Scream will look like, be sure to head on over to the Fleet Viewer module from hangar.staratlas.com. Link will be dropped in the chat for you now. And click on that button and boom, now you have access to the Scream Fleet Viewer. Pretty awesome, pretty awesome. Let's go. Our next presentation is something the Stratless team is very proud of and has been quietly working on in the background that will help connect the Solana blockchain and Unreal Engine 5. Please welcome Star Atlas Principal Engineer, Jim Carter. Thanks, Ash. I appreciate getting the chance to be here and present on our foundation kit. I'm Jim Carter, distinguished engineer. I get to work with both the web and Unreal game teams. For the last 25 plus years, I've been developing video games, visual simulations, flight simulators, that kind of stuff. All right. What is the foundation kit and why are we so excited about it? Well, it's the one library to rule them all. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, Basically, it's both a wallet like Phantom or Soulflare, so it's a Solana wallet, and it's also a Web3 JS implementation for Unreal, which enables Unreal to interact with the blockchain 
uh, Solana blockchain over our PC calls. So obviously we can't have a Web3 game without blockchain interaction, right? Um, and in all seriousness, uh, you know, the thing that got me really excited about joining Star Atlas uh, many moons ago is this concept of player ownership and of real economic benefit that are core to Star Atlas ethos. The blockchain enables that not just in Star Atlas, but the entire ecosystem of tokenized exchange of value that a blockchain provides uh, just breaks down the, gall, the gall, <laughs> walled garden of traditional MMO gaming today. That is one of the big things of why we built this. Now, especially for the developer uh, oriented out there, you might ask, you know, there's existing battle tested solutions. There's Phantom, there's other Solana wallets. The Web3 is built by Solana Labs. So, you know, why aren't we using those? And um, I'll tell you, we actually, we, we, we looked at a couple of, we, we did some proof of concepts with them. Um, we built a hybrid application as a launcher that we can embed Phantom, we can embed Web3S. Um, we embedded Node directly in Unreal. Um, and both of those gave us access to those said battle-tested solutions. Um, all, all of them provided issues. Uh, the hybrid had two big challenges. Uh, one, user experience. Having the launcher pop up, having Phantom pop up, while you're in the middle of playing the game, it's just a bad experience. Um, and then, you know, once we got it working, we had to make sure that the inter-process communication was secure. The last thing you want is you don't want the launcher driven by some nefarious app that you accidentally downloaded and it's getting your wallet to pop up and it's getting you to sign transactions that you don't know. So to secure the connection between the native hybrid native launcher and the unreal we had to do all of the encryption and security and cryptography that we would have had done to do a wallet anyways because you can't have the launcher and the communication protocol be less secure than the wallet itself the last thing when we when we put node inside of of unreal we we we, we saw things that we think could really to long-term performance issues node is great we use node i use node all the time but it can be a memory hog and it can it can be a cpu uh it can eat a lot of cpu especially for something you know, we're not running a big web server, we're just doing the, the, the integration with the Solana. So um, it's a lot of weight just for one thing. Uh, the big benefit, too, that when, when we, we wrote it in Unreal and we got it in Unreal is we we're able to control the entire wallet experience and really integrate it into the immersion, the immersion and experience of Star Atlas. And you'll see that as you get into uh, as we get into some of these screenshots. The last point I want to make about it is, you know, Star Atlas is unique and we have the benefit of having both world-class Solana developers uh, committed to the core Solana uh, and we have, you know, unbelievable uh, Unreal developers and we're all in the same roof and so we could collaborate together and we could build it. So let's talk a little bit about the wallet. Um, really, we're all big fans of Phantom and we followed the Phantom create import wallet process. The so one thing that we really did different was that each public private key pair is protected by its own unique password. Uh, we did this so that households with share gaming PCs can have players using the same client. Okay, now for the developers out there, uh, we know, you know, no, every AAA game has its own art direction and its own unique user UI and UX. And so we expect uh, that you're gonna be building your own user interface for this. And we provide a refer reference implementation in the kit um, and we provide obviously blueprint access, but um, we're really expecting that you, you, you build your own UIs. All right, a little bit about Web3, uh, the Web3.js. So um, fundamentally, this is the networking library to interact with Solana, um, written, by scra written from scratch in UE style C++. Uh, you should feel right at home for any UE developer. Currently supports HTTP and HTTPS. Um, we're working on WebSockets. So now let's walk through some screenshots of showing showrooms implementation of the wallet. This is showing how we embedded the wallet into the showroom experience. Up in the top right, you can see the user's uh, public key. And in the bottom left, there's a little icon as what it's going out. It's going out to Galaxy. It's getting our NFT list. And then it's in going to the, looking at the blockchain, looking at the associated token accounts and the tokens accounts that are associated with that, getting a player's inventory, basically. Here, let's kind of walk you through a little bit the new creation experience. And we're going to have a whole uh, article and tutorial on how to create a wallet, how to import your private keys. But I just kind of want to show this a little bit here. So here, um, the show using a mnemonic or using a public or using a private key. In this one, they're selecting the mnemonic. 
they've entered their their seed phrases and then one of the user hurdles we're worried about is people going well okay what is this derivation path which one did i use before so we put some stuff in there to help like showing that this is a derivation path typically used by soulflare we have another one that says this is typically used by phantom again i talked about how this really is is native to unreal uh, c plus plus i wanted to show you we're not using the standard template library we're not using char pointers we're using f string uh, with that, I want to say thank you, and I look forward to meeting some of you with the question and answer later today. That is awesome. Like, absolutely incredible. Thank you so much for that, Jim. Not only are you getting in, so, you know, just to summarize for you guys, not only are you getting an in-game wallet that connects Unreal Engine 5 to Solana to supercharge your gaming experience, but this fully open source F kit will be available to any developer worldwide. And it enables quick and easy integration of Unreal Engine 5 and the Solana blockchain while providing blueprints for UI and the visual coding ability to integrate with any Solana program. And for the Star Atlas community, this F kit opens up the potential for development of their own 3D experiences or worlds that will ultimately integrate into Star Atlas through our game portal a little further down the line. Um, for more information on this F kit, the GitHub is now live and the link will be dropped in the chat for you now. If you ask me, I mean, Santi, this is pretty epic, not gonna lie. This is awesome, Ash, this is awesome. I love especially that developers can create their own UI. So I, I really can't wait to, to see what our community of developers comes up with. I know they are ready, they are ready to start building. I know, and I'm ready to see what it is that they're going to build, right? We have so many incredibly talented people within our Star Atlas ecosystem. I know that they're just gonna completely blow us away with what it is that they bring to the table. So I'm excited. Yes, let's go, let's go. All right, well, Sandy, we have now reached the moment that everyone has been waiting for. I think it's about time for something a little bit unreal but before we drop that just now just yet i want to feel some excitement again guys i need to feel some more hype and excitement rolling through that chat right now what do you think santi yeah i want to see some emotes in the chat right now ash i want to see some emotes let's go stratless family this is the moment we have been waiting for let's do it I know we've been waiting for this for so long you guys and it's finally here it's finally upon us I cannot wait. I am so stoked. Let's do this, guys. You ready, Santi? I'm ready, Ash. I'm ready. All right, all right, let's go. So the showroom is the first glimpse into a real-time UE5 game environment with AAA quality graphics. They are incredible, and you guys, so incredibly lifelike. This downloadable pre-alpha demo client combines state-of-the-art blockchain with UE5's Nanite, Lumen, and other cutting-edge graphics tech to deliver cinematic quality video game visuals and allow for a display of in-game assets fully owned by you, the players. So without further ado, here it is, you guys, a walkthrough of our pre-alpha showroom demo with commentary from our chief product officer, Danny Floyd. Uh, here we go. This is the main menu. So I'm already logged in with a wallet and uh, yeah, let's, without further delays, just go ahead and jump in, hitting play now and, and starting the, the showroom. So, got a nice intro cutscene that uh, shows the overlay of the, of the showroom, uh, all the architecture and the places we can go. And, and like I said, this is a tech demo, so we've got, we've got architecture, we've got environment. These are pipelines that we've had to kind of uh, work through in a nice contained project. We've got character. We figured out that, you know, we can get up to 100,000 100, polys on our character models. Uh, we got animation, camera movements that, that feel good. Um, there's a, a place as you get in to put your rebirth posters. Um, eventually you'll be able to swap those out. And yeah, you can kind of see that um, all these pieces are coming together that make an actual playable product now. The beauty of Unreal Engine 5, you can see the lighting. There's some more of these, like, we're calling them plinths, where uh, you can put art on it 
and you'll be able to socket some of the art that's in your inventory. You can see switching to first person here, uh, it's real first person camera. It's not just a, it's not just a fake. <laughs> um, and jumping into the terminals, we've got teleportation, we've got the ability to pull in your ship inventory and, and kind of look at it. So let's go ahead and pull in the, the Fimble Mamba and you can see some details before you, you bring it in. Um, these are all stuff that are, are from the marketplace, but uh, yeah, set that ship down. We have a clay model um, at first because this one's not fully complete, but you can kind of follow along the progress and then you can shape the showroom to, to kind of help uh, look at your ships in different angles, look at your characters in different angles. So, uh, you know, just like a garage door in, in today's technology, you can just open this giant hangar door to get some nice lighting to come into the main main hall here. Again, it's just a clay model with the with the little hollow wireframe around it. And, and as updates come to that ship, you'll be able to see them in content patches over time. Um, there's smaller ship pads as well for, for the really, really small ships. Um, here we go with the Pierce X4. This one is not a clay model because we're much further along with it. Uh, it's got fully surfaced and, uh, materials and, and, and basically ready to ride. But th that's coming in, in further updates. And then, yeah, there's multiple of these like small ship pads. And you can see there's the marketplace option, the teleportation, and then the, uh, yeah, pulling in another Fimble air bike, again, in the clay clay model stage. Uh, these are all uh, in production at some point. And let's run back and you can kind of see there's this photo mode. Um, you just press C or escape and go into photo mode and you kind of choose uh, any angles you want. This is just the first iteration of it. The next iteration of photo mode will go into a lot more detail, a lot of camera controls, depth of field, uh, and, um, and some filters and all, all sorts of cool things. And then, uh, yeah, took a, took a picture, it saves it to your hard drive, and then it makes it much easier to share. You don't have to jump in and out, taking screenshots. Um, and another one, yeah, getting a really close look at these ships, you can see just how high poly they really are. This nanite technology in Unreal Engine 5 is absolutely mind-blowing. I, I, I would make it a challenge for people to try to find a polygon. I'm not saying it's pos impossible, but it's going to be a challenge. So please let me know if you find any polygonal faceting anywhere on these models. Uh, Again, some of the tech that we've been working through is like the interaction tech. So we have this like kind of switch uh, that you can also activate the hangar door. So these kinds of things that we've uh, worked through in the showroom is stuff that's going to be throughout the full game in all different environments um, for all different interactions and that kind of thing. Landing pads. You can filter. Uh, ships by by size and manufacturer um, So dropping it down to all medium calico. Let's pull in the calico compact hero Set that ship and get a look again clay model, but it's very far along and you can kind of see the the current progress uh, In the amount of detail that we're able to get in here and the design refinements that you can see It's a, a beautiful ship and it feels it feels very different when you when you come down to this level and actually get to look at these details and get a sense of really the scale that we're, we're shooting for in, in Star Atlas um, and the, the beautiful cinematic quality of the lighting from, from the lumen lighting. Um, uh, another thing we're working through is like these little dirt maps and, and grunge maps and uh, decals you can see all over the, the landing pads and the, the amount of detail and in Unreal and it's still performant and playable is, is game-changing. It's actually, it's it's amazing to work in this engine. It's, um, I've been in this industry for 20 years and the fact that this stuff just works as they say it's gonna work is mind-blowing. It, it, it's really a, a pleasure to work in, to, in this engine. Um, as you see, we've also like working out some of the foliage, how we're laying that out. There's some of it that's still a little placeholder, but everything else in this, in this uh, environment has been handcrafted from the rocks and the, all the architectural uh, elements, uh, the characters, the ships, the interaction uh, terminals. Here we go, we have the pier 
now and you can bring in like let's bring in a commander ship the pier c11 which is massive and you'll see here yeah looking out you can really get a sense for the scale uh anybody who owns a ship this size yeah bring it in and take a look because it's it's a beauty um and when you bring it into an environment like this, one of the purposes of having all that foliage, a nice little garden, is trees and bushes kind of help help us get a sense of, of, of scale because it's very relatable. Uh, we introduced the teleportation uh, functionality because it has a big environment, so being able to move around quickly is very helpful. Um, so you can choose from indoor or outdoor locations. This is technology that will exist in very key uh, places where energy lines converge uh, throughout the Star Atlas universe. Um, and and the Fatoli have been able to harness that energy and create some teleportation technology. So Sherwin is one of those special places that that exists. Uh, here we go with the faction leaders. So we've got the three Mud Oni Ooster faction leaders on uh, who were the founders of the factions. We have the contemporary leaders that are in the current uh, timeline of the game. And then the three signers of the Treaty of Peace that established the Council of Peace that allowed the flourish flourishing of these three economies in space and the beauty of this lighting is just it's jaw-dropping and as you can see um, all these things have been worked on in excruciating detail to push the quality standards as high as possible within the time frame that we gave ourselves we're still improving and the the follow-up releases will will be even better and people are going to be your mind's going to be really blown but this is a very playable release and and you can kind of see and get in and 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 see your inventory the next area is is uh we have these corners um in the showroom where you can kind of take a look a quick look at the different uh ship models like say you don't necessarily own them yet but you can just take a quick look and in, in the little miniature showcasing of of the different manufacturers we have thimble in that corner we've got uh uh, yeah, another quick look down at the main hall. You can get multiple angles by being in the top top level to kind of take a look at these ships and, and take some take some cool photos. I mean, for now, that's kind of you know the the fun part of this experience is to to see what this digital property will eventually grow into. Again, interaction things like the the elevator and 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 that making that work and standardizing that for all the ships and environments and every other place in the entire game uh will use this base technology and the more and more we do that the, the easier it is to expand these environments in a very quick way yeah take another quick shot you can see you're starting to fill out you got the pier c11 you got the calico compact hero and the fimble mamba there in one shot it's really it's really fun to, to bring these all into to one experience. I won't ruin every corner, but we got Pierce and Calico and uh, Opal ships that you can also see in the in the showroom in those corner showcase areas. We've got the story of, of humankind as they uh, became a spacefaring species and, and they were visited by Fatoli and then they ruined the planet and took off to space with that fleet that they built, uh, which when they ran into these other aliens and robot life it caused the major war the 10-year convergence war and then ultimately the signing of the treaty of the peace uh, and there you have it thanks for walking through the showroom with me i can't tell you how excited i am to get this into the hands of the community and anyone interested in star atlas so they can all take part in this development process together have fun I don't know about you, but I am completely blown away right now. Like, holy cow. Me too, Ash. This is, this is unbelievable. So cool. So cool. I absolutely love it. Like, I cannot wait to get in there and start looking for those Easter eggs that Danny had teased us about previously in a town hall. It's going to be so epic. Yeah, Ash, me too. Me too. I, can, I honestly can't wait to check my two fest in there. Uh, definitely worth the wait. And guys, as uh, fantastic as this event has been, um, I've really appreciated and enjoyed actually sitting in and reading the comments and watching all of the presentations just as much as I have uh, enjoyed participating in it. But we do have one more major announcement today. More Alpha, Michael.
<laughs> you know that I love that, Michael. You know that I love that. Yes. So this is probably the other big moment that everybody's been waiting for. Uh, today, we formally announced that we've officially solidified our relationship with Epic Games. And what that means is that as of today, Star Atlas will be listed on the Epic Games Store for download. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Let's go. Like, holy cow, Michael, that is so cool. That's so cool. I mean, we've been building our entire game using Epic's Unreal Engine 5, so I guess this just seems like a natural fit, right? It's just like the next step. Yeah, I'm. this is really huge. Um, Epic has always been, uh, they've been pioneers and innovators, uh, as are we at Automata and, and in Star Atlas. And I'd say one of the really important parts here is that uh, Epic is actually pretty supportive of Web3 gaming. So uh, we're super happy to be working together with them closely. Yeah, yeah, not gonna lie, it feels really good knowing that they want us on their side. Yeah, um, I mean, there are a ton of benefits here, but you know, outside of the seamlessness of being able to download and update and access the showroom, you know, one of the core advantages is this exposure to a huge new audience. Uh, if something like 180 million users on the platform and 32 million daily active users. So uh, this is this is an absolutely huge win for us. Yeah, Michael, I know you mentioned access in the showroom, but uh, this brings up like my last question. And I think it's the same, co the, the same question the committee has as well. So how do we get in, man? We are dying out here. Yeah, so uh, I, I get all the fun stuff. <laughs> uh, this is this is how it's going to work, uh, essentially. So uh, you start by going to play.staratlas.com, um, and you'll find the showroom on the new menu system that I referenced earlier today uh, in the keynote. Uh, you'll click on the download showroom button, and this is going to take you to the Epic Game Store download experience. Now, uh, quick aside, You'll also need to check your account profile on play.staratlas.com. So in order to do that, you connect your wallet, you go to your player profile page, and then you see if you've qualified for a pre-alpha game code. Um, these codes uh, might not be uploaded just yet. We're trying to time these around the event. So if you don't see them yet, uh, you should see a code on your account profile if you're eligible uh, sometime later today. Awesome. And I, I think, uh, you know, it makes sense as we should probably pull that last screen uh, back up for a moment. Um, this is kind of the other surprise of, uh, of how you access here. You know, we deliberated heavily on what we thought would be the best um, accessibility methodology. Now, we want as many people as possible to experience the showroom, but this is also a historic moment. You've all been waiting for this for a long time, and we wanted to reward all of those members of the community who have been supportive and with us uh, for such a long time. So essentially, the game keys are going to work this way. Um, and I guess just to avoid confusion, uh, if you're in the Epic, uh, Epic Game Store and you see beta key or product code or game code, these are all referencing the same game key. Uh, they're all referring to the same 20 digit number that you'll see on your player profile. So players will get a key to gain access to entry based on their badge status from Faction Fleet or otherwise known as score. So uh, the way that we are distributing these uh, and they're all coming out at the same time, by the way. So everybody will have access to this at the same time. Uh, however, players who have earned at least one season badge or higher, this is account wide, if you've earned one season badge uh, while enrolled in Faction Fleet, then you will gain access to showroom with one key. Uh, players that have earned higher tiers on their badges will be given additional keys, which you don't need yourself. And so we would encourage you to give those away to friends or family or anyone else that you think would enjoy Star Atlas. Uh, what you see on the graphic right now um, is that those with a season badge get one key. Hardened badge holders will get an extra key, so they get two. Veterans get three keys in total. 
and elite badge holders get four keys in total. So again, we encourage everyone uh, to share these access keys to friends and family. And finally, uh, I'll just note that if you don't currently have uh, a ship enlisted in faction fleet, it's actually pretty easy for you still to gain access to the showroom. Uh, what you'll need to do is own at least one ship. Uh, you'll enlist that ship with a faction. And after one week, you earn that seasoned uh, badge status and your key will automatically populate on your player profile. So from there, you can go to store.epicgames.com slash redeem and you'll be able to enter into the showroom yourself. That's incredible. Thank you so much, Michael. I mean, there you have it, guys. So go ahead, get your keys and be among the first to enjoy the showroom. And if you're not yet signed up, do it. It'll be coming out later, a little bit later today. So I believe within the next hour. So stay tuned and we will go ahead and announce that when they are available and ready for you to sign up and get your badges. And you know, you'll be on your way. If you're not signed up yet, do it now so you can work towards your first badge and get your own game keys. And now if you're a member of the community, now is the time to head on over to the official Star Atlas Discord for a very special edition of the Atlas Brew with Santi, Jose, and Dom. And if you're a member of the press, now is the time to hop into that Zoom link for a Q&A with CEO Michael Wagner and other team members. If you missed any of the links dropped today, don't worry because they can be found in the Star Atlas Discord. Thanks to everyone for being here today. It's been incredibly awesome. And I'm excited that I was able to be here with all of you for this as well. Yeah, this was, it was an absolutely monumental day. So uh, thank you to everyone again for attending. I really hope you enjoyed the, the presentations today and uh, a sincere thank you again to everyone across the Star Atlas team. Everyone go out and enjoy all those new products and we're gonna see you again real soon. Yeah, I just want to echo what you said, Michael, and huge shout out as well for the community always supporting us in every single event. The Stratless team, you guys have been crushing it. We're just uh, three here, but the Stratless team is huge and a lot of people working behind the scenes. But super happy to be able to host another event here with you, Michael and Ash. It's uh, an enormous pleasure. And until next time, empower to the people. And stick it to the man.